We'd like to take this chance to welcome you to this chapel. This is a chapel that's a replica of a chapel built in 500 AD in what was then called Cappadocia. We call it Southern Turkey. The sixth century was an amazing time within the church for architecture especially. During the fifth century, the Roman Empire had by and large crumbled and illiteracy was at an all-time high. Uh, the uh, literate rate made it very difficult for the church to teach doctrine, to teach uh, uh, ethics, to teach Bible, all at a time where people did not have a Bible to read. And if they'd had one, they probably couldn't have read much of it anyway. So the church was perplexed and was trying to grab every tool at its disposal to teach and reinforce both doctrine and practice. One of the principal tools of the church was the architecture of the buildings themselves. During this time in Byzantine Christian world, which would have been in the Turkey down into the Holy Land area, uh, the church grabbed onto what were called cruciform churches. They were churches like this one that were built in the shape of a cross. The principle being that before you built your church building, you had to lay the foundation. And the foundation of the church was to be the foundation of the cross. So as you walk through our replica, please notice how it's built very much like a cross has laid down upon the ground. At the very top of the cross are three windows. Those three windows represent the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit which the Christian church was teaching were properly at the head of every church. The church itself was laid out where it's facing east, as our church is as well. That's based upon the Matthew promise of Jesus that as lightning flashes from the east, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. The church understood Jesus to be saying that his second coming would be from the east. And as an expectant church, the church congregated and met, always facing east, a testimony to their expectant coming Lord. The church was uh, uh, built not only with those aspects in mind, but many more. And what we've done is we've taken some pictures of the ruins that were found in 1909 by a British explorer named Madame Gertrude Bell. Gertrude Bell took 30 pictures, black and white photos, of course, that were subsequently put at Newcastle upon Tyne, a university library in England. Uh, these photographs we took, we were able to use them along with a paper prepared by a Harvard architect in 1970, where that architect tried to take the same pictures and reconstruct what would the chapel have looked like if you'd been there when it was originally built. We've reconstructed it, trying to pay attention both to the two-foot thick stone walls as well as the 50-foot off-the-ground dome that's found in the center of the cross. These churches would elevate the dome in the center because the, the dome would be over the part of the cross where Christ's heart was if Christ had been stretched out on the cross. The teaching was that the heart of Christ was closest to heaven, hence the dome, would be elevated. The dome is also the central place for understanding the painted story of this church. What we've tried to do in the painting, which was done so well by artist Richard McCluskey from Lubbock, Texas, we've tried very hard to replicate not only some, some Byzantine themes, but also a convergent story of the Bible. So the, the paintings begin as you walk right through the front doors with the creation of man, and they end with the projected passage out of Revelation where Jesus comes again and the dwelling of God is once more with men. So here you have a chance to see some of these wonderful vistas that communicate core aspects of the biblical message. It starts with the creation of Adam in the hands of God 
And so you see God forming Adam from the dust of the field. The next vista that we have contains Abraham finally getting that son of promise through Sarah, Isaac. And Isaac is one that Abraham takes at the command of God to Mount Moriah to offer in sacrifice. As Abraham and his son go up, two men hold the donkeys back behind. The son is, is concerned, Father, where is the sacrificial animal? It's at that point that Abraham says, prophetically, God himself will provide the sacrifice. As Abraham, in obedience, starts to slay his son, an angel stops and says, no, your son will not be an adequate sacrifice. There's a ram in the thicket that will do for now. But of course, the Christian understanding of this is the true son of sacrifice would not be Abraham's son. It would be the actual son of God that would take away the sins of the world. If we move to the second arch, you'll see what uh, the Hebrew Passover is all about. This is an arch that, that uh, explains the, the life of the Hebrews in bondage, something very important not just to Jewish believers but also to Christian believers. It starts out with a double-framed vista of uh, the Egyptians in bondage. You'll see Pharaoh there with his whip. You'll also notice in part of the scene Moses stopping the Egyptian from clubbing to death a Jewish slave. The dome itself is elevated because it's a heavenly scene and that's the reason it's painted blue as a background color. The dome has Jesus sitting on a throne with the nail scarred hands and feet because he reigns as a slain Messiah. But he reigns with his throne saying Panto Krator, which is found in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. It's Greek. It means almighty or ruler of all. Jesus' robes are painted in a Byzantine uh, style. They have two colors to represent his two natures. The red in his robes represent blood, which is the human nature. The blue, the heavens, which is his divine nature. Jesus also wears a sash, a gold sash, which was a remnant of the Roman Empire. The emperor would wear that sash signifying his place as king and ruler over all. We hope you've enjoyed this tour. We hope you have a chance to look at each of the paintings. There's so much more than I've had time to tell you. So please enjoy it to the glory of God. Thank you for sharing it with us.